Hey guys, it's John with Blue Custom Garage, and welcome back to uh, the channel. We're going to go live today uh, and talk about a few things. Um, one, give you kind of an update on the fly rod that uh, I did last week when I did the reel seat and the handle, uh, showing you how to get a proper fit, and you, you'll be able to see that video up here in the right hand corner. Um, and then this here, um, hey, hey Marcus, glad you made it, man. Um, and so this one here is kind of a pickup from, um, from yesterday, uh, excuse me, from last Monday's live video that I did. Um, and so really what I wanted to show you um, was what it looks like um, once you get, you know, that video last week showed, you know, the proper way or a way, if you will, how to, you know, sand out the inside of the handle to make sure you get a good fit um, with your fly reel seat. Um, and so this is that finished product. And I just wanted to, to share that and, and give that an update so you guys can um, see kind of what it looked like um, as a finished product. So then the other thing I'm gonna do um, here is I'll go back over and uh, I'll put some tape because I'm still working on this rod. You guys are probably seeing a few pictures. You can see some stuff that I'm doing here. Um, so I'll have a little bit of dragon scale uh, in there and then you know uh, saw blade wrap that uh, that I included so this is a um, nine foot uh, seven weight fly rod uh, for one of my customers um, and so I'm just kind of putting the handle back on or putting this tape back on this handle so I can get it uh, situated the next thing that I wanted to do um, is I wanted to kind of pick up um, on a video, it, it also from something that, that I worked on last week, if you will. Um, this is the, um, this is the Lama Glass rod where I did the guide removal on it last week. Um, and so what I want to do is just kind of show you, um, a technique in, in wrapping that. Um, and so I'm going to put on the, the new guide um and let you guys see how that's going to work out so um really quick let me grab let me grab my guide that i want to use and so th this um these are alps guides um, i love these double footed spinning guides you can use them as casting guides as well um, but i love these uh high quality guys they're they're i don't want to say they're a bit expensive um, but they're a bit expensive. I mean, you get what you pay for. They're high quality. Uh, they stand up to all kinds of the line types, braid, all kinds of good stuff. Um, a really good product. So here is where I removed a majority um, of that finish um, from that guide when I removed it. And then all I'm going to do is basically replace this guide. But I want to make sure I have it where I want it at, if you will. And I'm just going to show you how I do this um, since we're replacing a, a broken guide. And then I just like to measure. I like to use kind of a piece of tape to measure. Yeah, so that's like a piece and a half. And then that's like a piece. So I need to come up a little bit. So... What I think I want to do actually first, I'm going to remove a little bit more um, of this finish because I want to make sure I have a pretty good transition, if you will. And so I've got my alcohol torch. Yeah, there's heat there. So I just got my alcohol torch trying to soften up a little bit more of this old finish so I can kind of pop it off and what I'm really concerned about is here up on the back end because what I don't want is this to be exposed um, when I put the new guide on I don't want this old finish back here uh, to be exposed if you will so all right okay and then I'll do this other side as well one more time and again this is just picking up from where I was off um, 
last for, uh, last Monday. And for those of you that are just now joining, um, I started off the video and kind of showed an update of that fly reel seat and handle that I added or that I uh, sanded down uh, to get a good fit on. Um, that's where the video started at. So once this one's over, you can go back and watch and take a look at it and see um, how the finished product came out and what it looks like and stuff. So again, I'm just coming here. Getting that finish off. And I'm telling you, you guys, the uh, alcohol torch is the perfect tool for this job. Uh, it just takes patience on getting this old finish off. And you just want to make sure. Oh, awesome. Glad, glad to hear it, Marcus. Glad to hear it, brother. So if you want to see how to take the guide off, um, that is what, uh, I'm not sure if you, Marcus, if you saw last Monday's live video that I ended up doing, um, that was in that one, we, we removed the guide. Um, and then now this one, we're just going to wrap it and I'll explain a couple things in the process as well. But so I'm just going through there and then my old trusty shop towel and I'm just trying to clean this up. Again, not too much heat from the alcohol torch. And then we're going to come back to the guide. And because you can see where I left that part of the finish right there and right there, what I want is an is a equal um, set between those, if you will. So I'm using the tape to kind of guide me. And then I'll take my guide here and see you know, I get it where I want it at to be centered. Wrap that around and then take a look. And then that should be pretty good. And then what I'll do is instead of coming down here and putting tape on the end, I'm going to show you how I will use these ends of where the ramp of the finish that I cut and how I can go ahead and, uh, and use those as a, as a straight edge, if you will, for my thread. So the thread I'm wrapping, um, I'm sorry, I should have showed this to you. This is a pro wrap nylon thread. Um, I want to say it's around uh, color code 343. Um, it is a size, actually, that is not what I want to use. I'm just comparing really quick. That is not what I want to use. I am going to use, um, I'm just taking a comparison. So here is the old rod and there's some of the old finish right there. And so what I'm trying to do is just see what color of thread is closer. So I have two different colors of thread. Now, of course, this brown or this mahogany maroon color will dry darker right um, but i, I want to make sure i'm close and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and remove this hey duck what's going on glad to see you make it so what i'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and use uh this size d343 pro wrap nylon type um, we'll go ahead and set this up all right marcus i see it you were late you missed it no problem I got you covered, man. We get you squared away. So what we'll do is get my spool strung up here really quick. And then what I'll do is, all right, so next, let me close my box of guides there. And now what I want to do is, again, I'm going to use this straight edge where I took my razor blade and cut that epoxy finish um, when I took that old guide off, I'm just going to use that as my straight edge. So I'm going to take my thread and again, this is a spinning rod. All right. So I'm going to set this up and I'm going to bring this working in up here to the top like that and then pinch it right there. And that's what I'm going to use kind of like for my seam, if you will. And, and I'm just loosening up my tension rod. And so I'm just going to throw all this thread right in here. And so we'll cut that and then we're going to go wrap. 
and oh, come off track a little bit. And the reason why I like using, um, I mean, you can call it a pro tip, you can call it whatever you want to call it. The reason why I like using, excuse me, regular nylon thread when I do guide replacements is because regular nylon thread is more forgiving and it will allow us to hide our impurities. Um, and those impurities um, could be from the guide foot right? Could be from one of your guide feet, or it could be from the residual finish if you didn't get it all off, you know, or if it's too hard and you got some on there and you just can't get it off. Using your regular nylon thread is going to help us disguise those because when you put your finish on your regular nylon thread, it just dries as the color, right? It just dries as the color and you cannot see your individual thread wraps. You just see the color. If you're using color fast, um, if you're using color fast thread, let me find you an example um, here on this red. Because this is color fast thread, those individual things you can see each individual thread even when you put your finish on. Yep, there you go. I agree. Rainbow sprinkles, welcome back, man. Hey, and you know what? Because rainbow sprinkles is here, I know I put a I put a post. Uh, in the feed the other day, um, last week, it, I just, you know, publicly uh, through a live stream, want to give a shout out to Rainbow Sprinkles um, for being the first person uh, and the only person ever to give me a super chat. Um, and I thought that was pretty awesome. And so uh, Rainbow Sprinkles, thank you very much, man. I truly appreciate the support to the channel. Um, so what we're going to do here is take this thread and I'm just turning the rod, right? And just trying to keep it tight. Now again, this is size D thread. Um, this is a salmon rod that, that I'm restringing for a customer. But I, I, I want to show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to come to right about here. And I could tie off this wrap right here if I wanted to. Okay. But that is not what I'm going to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is make one more wrap and then I'm going to take my finger here. There you go. Take my finger and I'm going to bring that thread in one thread width. And I'm just going to kind of line my thread up. Oops. Yeah, I messed that up. See that? All right. Do that again. So I'll just bring that line, that thread in one line right there. And all I'm doing is doubling back. So I'm doing a double over wrap. Um, so I, again, I could have finished with just one wrap, um, but I, I, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of a double over wrap person when I start getting into heavier, fresh and salt water builds. Um, and so that's what we're doing here. And so I'll wrap this down to right about there. Again, this is a spinning rod. So I want my seam to be up here. And now what I'm going to do is take my thread. Come right there. I'm going to wrap this down. All the way, all the way right to the edge of our thread. And, those, and for those of you that are just joining um, and you didn't see me start this wrap, I'm taking it. I cut that finish with my razor blade ever so slightly and gently uh, when, I, when I pulled this old guide off. And so I'm going to use that straight edge from that finish as my straight edge. All right, I'm going to pull that in there like that. And then grab my scissors. And use my finger. All right, and then my white line here. There we go. And so now just use my finger again to pull that down and I'll take my razor blade. Sorry guys, take my razor blade, hold that down, give a little cut. And then use the tip of my burnishing tool to bury that end in. Or I could also come back and hit it with a little heat from my alcohol torch. Mm. 
There we go. Just like that. All right, and so that one is wrapped. And so again, on the same side or the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, and of course, you could add a tag wrap in here if you were gonna have a tag wrap on the end. This rod didn't have tag wraps on it, so I'm, gonna, I'm just trying to keep it in theme and, and not do tag wraps um, with this. So there we go, get my line started. All right, and then give it a little tug. And we'll cut this working end off. And same thing, we'll just work down to the rod or to the guide. All right, and we'll keep going down. And then I'm gonna show you uh, something else. A, a, I'm gonna, speaking of tag wraps, I guess, uh, after I do this one guide on this, I'm gonna show you guys some tag wrap um, techniques, the straw technique that I like to use. I think other people out there use it. I, I believe other people use it. Um, so I'm just gonna wrap this until I get to this tape, pop this tape off. All right. And then I keep wrapping. Um, and go all the way down past this foot. And then we'll come back. I want to go past the foot, but I want to go to the edge of that finish. That's where I'm trying to get with this. And I think that's just good right there. All right. And we'll come back down. All right. So now I'm working back. So this is that double over wrap piece to it. All right. Um, and then just quickly... Again, with my hands, just hand wrapping this thing. There's no power to it. And then we'll stop right about there. We'll bring in our white line here. So we can tie this off. And nice little tug. Again, um, I'm going to get on the, the, the nylon thread bandwagon. Um, it, again, if you're, you know, doing a guide replacement, my, my recommendation is, you know, using a nylon thread um, because nylon, regular nylon threads help you hide any uh, impurities that you guys may have. And, and, and in this case, and that, and when I mean impurities, for those of you that are just joining, I'm not, I'm not saying your, your, your rod building work, right? That, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is things like this right here. So, you know, you can see here where we wrapped and pulled this stuff off and there's that residual finish. I want that finish to lay right over that and kind of hide that stuff. And so when I use regular nylon thread, um, it, you, you can't see any of the impurities below it that you wrap over from the, you know, from any of the residual finish that was there when you took the guide off. So, but that's that. Been doing that with a nylon thread all my guy feet since. She, yep, thanks, Duck. Appreciate it, man. So that is what um, that wrap looks like. Um, again, if you are interested, I'm sorry, guys. I all of a sudden got a runny nose this afternoon. Um, so this guide here, um, if you guys are interested, these are Alps guides. Um, I love Alps guides. I'm kind of an Alps Fuji person when it comes to just regular casting or spinning guides. Um, but these guys specifically are the XPTC um, VDCG, and this is a size 30. And then my next one that I'll put on later on is a size 20. Um, but these are legit guides. I love these guides. Uh, very durable. I put these on my Light Fighter series of rods, uh, which is a seven and a half foot two-piece um, spinning setup for big game freshwater fish and you know medium 
uh, you know, like smaller tuna, mahi, stuff like that. So, all right, so we got that set up um, and done. So the next thing I'm gonna do, let me take this off the wrapper really quick. And then what I'm gonna do is bring on, so here, um, here is a fly rod that I'm working on. So this is the rest of that fly rod that I showed you guys the handle on. Um, and these are wreck guides. So these are wreck stripping guides and then double foot snake guides. Um, this one rod's going to Ohio. Um, and so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to do a video on putting one of these um, guide feet on here, these double, uh, double foot snake guides. And um, I wanted to kind of talk through the, um, the tag wrap part, if you will. And uh, so let me, let's change out some thread. And while I'm changing out thread, um, I hope you guys are finding the video useful. Um, and if you are finding it useful, please uh, feel free to hit the like button if you haven't done so already. Um, and then hopefully, you know, other people will find the video and, and we'll be able to watch it and, and learn from it like you guys are doing. So um, this is, uh, again, in, and I know you guys have heard me say it before, um, I'll use Pro Wrap Color Fast or Color Fast Thread or put Color Preserver on some threads when I do guide wraps. Um, but you just got to remember, man, when you guys are using a color that is light, um, it's it's not, it's it's not forgiving. Um, and I have an example that I can show you guys. If you give me one second. So here. Um, is a rod that I've been working on for a little bit and it's kind of dusty, but um, so if you look right here on this rod, so this has been wrapped, um, this rod, this guide was wrapped with color fast thread, right? And so you can see right here where the thread crossed over. So here, each line is straight, each piece of thread is straight, but right here on this wrap, I had to cross over. Um, and that's what I mean by it's, it's, it's unforgiving. So when you use a lighter color thread, like the gray that I have, or like this green that I used on this rod right here, if you're using a color fast product, you just need to keep that in mind. When you put your finish on here, there's a high probability that those threads will be able to be seen when you put your finish on it. Like each individual thread is what I mean. So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's grab this fly rod really quick again. Um, get this set up. So I want to show you how to do the tag wrap or how I, how I like to do a tag wrap. You can see I've got my uh, the spine identified on this blank. So I'm maximizing my parabolic bend, if you will. Um, and I'm going to take this. This is <clears throat> this ProRap ColorFast 819. It's the gray. You guys see me use this quite a few times in some videos. And then what we'll do is we're going to wrap this guide. Um, and then I'm going to kind of get into the tag wrap piece of stuff. And, you know, you can, we all probably wrap guides. I mean, you would, Maybe we all wrap guides the same, but I know we all wrap guides in our own individual ways based on, you know, our, our preferences and techniques and all that other stuff. So I'm going to move that out. I'm going to grab um, and find the, the next guide I'm going to use here. Um, these are wreck double foot snake guides. And so I'm just trying to find my next size, that one's small, of course. That one, that one, I think it's this one here. Bam. Yep, so it's gonna be this one here. And we'll pack these away. Now a great way if you just buy your, you know, snake guides or your guides, you know, in bulk order, you can, you know, of course, mark them when you put them down. Um, on a piece of tape and then kind of tape over them. And that always, that's always pretty helpful. Um, so I've got this piece of, or I have this piece of tape. 
I'm going to grab one more piece of small tape here. And then what we'll do um, is we'll start wrapping this thing. But here's how I do it. So, you know, I get my, I have my rod on the parabolic bend. I've got my mark with the, the red china marker on where I want the next guide to go. I'm just going to quickly just place my guide right there. Uh, I'll grab a piece of tape. And I like to use this tape as a spacing. Some people wrap down to the end of the um, to the end of the guide foot, and that is totally fine. Some people like a longer guide wrap. Some people like shorter guide wraps. Um, I like to put one piece of tape length, if you will, um, above and below each guide foot on whatever rod it is I'm building. So, and then what I'll do is I'll move that piece of tape. Like that. All right. And then what we'll do is we'll take the guide off. And then I'll come back, shop towel, and, and clean the blank. Get that red china marker off of there. All right. And then what I'll do next is line up that mark so I know where the spine of my rod is at. I'll take my tape and then I'll take my guide and I'll come back up here and put my guide down like that and then we're there we go. And now what I'll do is I'll just take my thread and then we'll start wrapping. And then I can show you guys this tag wrap technique that I use. Um, and again, I think other people use it. You guys have probably seen me use it before. I know in pictures and some other things. So I'm going to take my time with this one. I'll be doing a single wrap um, on here. Not a, not a double over wrap, but a single wrap. And then just kind of turn it. All right, here we go. So now we get into here. So I get a few wraps here. Now pack my thread a little bit. All right. Okay, so we'll keep going down. And now I'm gonna start to, I'm gonna remove this piece of tape gently and then keep wrapping all right and I'm gonna just back it off a little bit right about there probably all right and I'll take my string three four five one more because when i pull that down that'll compress down a bit there all right and then we'll come right here pull that thread and then we'll pack And then a little tension. And then we'll cut that piece of thread, that working end, if you will. And I can come back. All right. And then just burnish that in a little bit. All right. And then we'll do one more side, and then I'll do the tag wrap. So I just want to make sure this is good and secure. We'll get into the tag wrap portion. All right, um, so we'll pack that down a little bit, nice and snug. All right, cut that off.
All right. Now get it down here. Get it to the spot I want it at. You get a few wraps and then I'll pack it down. Cause that's gonna move that whole that whole thing right there. All right. Okay, and then we'll remove this tape, and wrap this down. Just gotta rub that out a little bit with my burnishing tool when we're done here. All right, so let me get this going. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off so we get into this tag wrap piece. All right, three, four, five, five, one more. And that'll, like I said, that'll compress down when I pull on the string. Okay. And then use my burnishing tool, pack my thread in there, and pull down a little, a little tight pressure. All right, and then we'll go ahead and cut this off. All right, now we're gonna get into the tag wrap. So I'll take that tape off. And so this is just a regular like a coffee straw or whatever that I use. I don't use a big thick soda straw. Again, it's just like a little coffee stir type of straw. Um, and just a technique that I like, and it's not the technique by no means. Uh, there, there's a bunch of ways to do tag wraps. Um, and you know, and, and this is a way I've been doing it for a long time. Um, and is it perfect? No. Um, does it work? Yes. Do I have great results with it? Yes. Sometimes I make a mistake. <laughs> yes. And I get some tag wrap ins that, that'll pop up. But for the most part, um, it's pretty, pretty easy. And I've got some videos. I have some videos. As a matter of fact, I'll put that here in the upper right hand corner. I have some videos on how to do tag wraps. Um, and so when this is not live and it's, uh, you know, people can come back and watch it just regular, like kind of on demand, if you will. Um, I'll, I'll have a link up there for uh, take people to the tag wrap video. So you guys should be able to see that up in the upper right hand corner. So three. So any time I'm doing the straw method with tag wraps, I do usually no more than five thread wraps like you can see right here. Um, I've done three. Um, I've done four, but usually it's just five. If I do anything less than three, if I'm just going to do one or two, of course, if I'm only doing one or two, I'm just going to do what we call an inlay wrap, right? I'm just going to, you know, do a single strand or a double strand inlay. Um, but here, all I'm going to do is I've wrapped that around the straw. So I'm going to take one end, come to this side, slide that thread through, and then pull it tight like that. And then I'm going to pinch it on this side and do the same thing with the piece of thread that was on this side. I'm gonna run it right through that gap. And I'll grab it and then reach over. And then you can see that I have two ends, right? And I'm gonna kind of choke up on this thread a little bit. And then what I do is I remove the straw. I slide the thread into position and then pull it tight like that. And then I come back with my burnishing tool. And then again, a little tug. And then take my razor blade and get close to there and pull. And the same thing on the opposite side. I'm trying to cut it down close to that. So I minimize kind of the tag wrap or the, like a little tag in. And you can see that that's that wrap. That's the finished tag wrap of, of five wraps. And so I'll do it again. 
Um, so that was regular blue nylon thread. Um, that was color code 455, size A. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into some Pro Wrap Color Fast 807, size A, and this is white. So I got the gray wrap, Color Fast, then I have a little blue nylon thread, excuse me, and now I'm gonna come in with some white Color Fast thread to do the same thing. Now even though these sizes of thread are exactly the same, they're both size A, um, you will get a larger tag wrap with a color fast thread than you will with a nylon thread. And you guys will see what I mean in a second. So one, two, three, four, five. So that gives me five right there. So five wraps. Take this in, slide it underneath. There we go. And then we do the same thing on this side. All right, and then pull that tight with one hand. With the other hand, remove the straw, line your rod up, slide your thread down, and then pull both ends a little bit tight. And then you can see how, not much, but you can see how that white tag wrap has is, is just a tiny bit wider than the, the blue one, and that's because it's color fast thread. All right, so we cut that end off. Cut that end off again, well. And then one more piece, and that's gonna be our metallic blue. Um, this one here is 9470 Pro Wrap Metallic Blue. Um, and so we're gonna take this one in here and do this tag wrap. And then let me know what you guys think so far. Leave a comment down below if you guys, uh, you know, what, what do you think? You, you, do you guys like the material? Are you getting something out of the video? Um, are, am I, are you learning something from the channel or do you just enjoy watching it? If, if so, um, leave a comment below. If, 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 you know, you're not getting anything from it or you wanna see me do something different, you know, again, Leave a, leave a comment down below and let me know what that is. Uh, and of course, I will respond to everybody's comments once I get a chance to, uh, after this video is done posting and stuff. So there's four, four, five. There we go. So back to five right there. Um, and then we're going to slide this through. All right, we're going to do the same thing here on this side. With the metallic blue. And we'll slide that down into position and then pull both ends at the same time. There we go. What happens if you pull one end more than the other, right? Instead of pulling them at the same time, if you pull a little bit more on one end than the other, what will happen is it could create a loop. Um, or what you can call, I guess, a bubble in that thread, but that's okay. Just stop and pull with the other end and it'll level right out. Um, and then again, just come in with your razor blade, make those cuts as close as you can to that wrap. And then that's it. And then we just repeat the same thing um, on the far side. And then that's it. And I, I, I won't uh, bore you guys with that. Um, or actually, you know what? Here, let's just knock it out real quick. While I have you guys here, uh, if you guys want to ask a question or something, then I'll try to... I'm getting ready to start rod building at the end. Oh, I didn't see it all. I'm sorry, I didn't see it kind of till the last minute, whoever wrote that. But I'll see it and I'll comment once, once the video's done, guys. Um, so we're going to go ahead... And again, we're coming on with the blue nylon. If you're just joining, that's 455 Pro Wrap type. Um, and then we're going to do five wraps. Three, four, five. So you can see there's five, five individual threads. And I take my thread in, working ends, slide them between the straw, but underneath those. And then turn it and do the same thing on this side. And 
then pull it tight with one hand and then pull the straw out with the other slide it down into position equal pressure on both sides burnishing tool give it a good turn and then that's it again straw method so um, here we go make your good cut Then we're gonna come back with the white. We only got two more to go. So we'll come back with the white here. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Slide that in there. And then slide this end in here. Turn that up, slide it down. There we go. And then burnishing tool, a little turn. And this, again, this is all in the cut, right? All in the angle of the blade and letting the blade do the work for you. And that'll help, help you cut it as close as possible so you don't have that little tag in on your tag wrap. All right, and then we'll do one more. Again, Pro Wrap uh, Metallic 9470. Good color blue right there. All right, and all right. So now we'll take this blue one, two, three, four, and we got five there. Slide it through. All right, same thing on this side. All right, and then pull that straw out. Um, there we go. All right, and then cut, and then cut, and then come back with your burnishing tool. And that's it. And that's what it looks like. So that's how that is, um, you know, the straw method, if you will, uh, or straw technique. I'm just going to redo my grease marker, grease pencil mark here. Excuse me. Sorry. That is the straw technique um, on incorporating um, or making tag wraps. Again, I think it, it's pretty useful, pretty easy. Um, you know, you don't have to have a lot of other loops and sliding them through. However, comma, this is just again, like I said earlier, this is just one way to do it. And there's a couple other ways. So I hope um, this video was helpful. I hope you guys got a lot out of it. Um, if you don't mind, if uh, you know if you found the, the video useful, uh, you know, feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. Um, you can hit the like button, and you can also leave me a super chat. Um, those are pretty awesome to get. It's a great way to support the channel and help me to be able to do the type of things I'm doing and, and help create these videos for you guys to watch them. So. Um, you know, if you, if you, ha if you never given a super chat to someone and, and you're, you're looking for a channel to do that to, um, you know, my channel is welcome. And if not, that's okay. It's totally fine. I'm just glad you guys are here and able to watch and, and get something out of the video. So again, please let me know what you guys think about the uh, videos down in the comments block. I will comment or respond on all of the comments once I'm done and the video is done posting. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, Hey guys, I appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, and until next time, guys, take care.